Welcome to the Faith Roots Podcast. We're in episode two of our series called Knowing God Intimately. I want to turn your attention to the book of John, John's Gospel, chapter 14. This is the beginning of the discourse of transition. This is where Jesus prepares the twelve to enter into the new covenant. He is weaning them from his present relationship with them, meaning he is no longer going to be with them physically. Let me read it. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house and many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Now, Here's what I want you to see. This was a process of weaning, of taking them to a new dimension. They were not quite ready to go there. It was a little bit rough on them. They did not understand it. They did not comprehend it. It is because they were natural people. Now, I will explain this by telling you a story about my own experience. When I became a follower of Christ and went to church, I was really hungry for God. And in my mind, I thought if I could only see God. Now, had I gone to certain kinds of churches, that would never have even been a hope. But my grandmother's church was a Pentecostal church, and there were people who had had visions of the Lord and had seen the Lord. And it was something that was commonly talked about. And I had heard about such things. I wanted to have a vision. I wanted to see Jesus. You know, some people think, no, this is totally crazy. And this is what I would tell you. It amazes me that more people don't see Jesus because there are so many people, especially young believers, who would love to see Jesus. And it is amazing to me how few people really do. And so there's something to that. These visions don't happen just because we want them to happen. And I wanted a vision of Jesus. I even asked if I could spend the night in the church, and I did. Spent the night there, praying, hoping that I could cause God to give me a vision. He did not do it. Now, I didn't understand the strength of the New Testament relationship at that time. I was a baby Christian, and God humored me. And he he didn't give me the vision, though. Here's what I want you to see. The disciples had to be weaned from this, and Jesus had to come physically. He had to come and do a physical ministry, and he had to physically die. And he had to physically rise from the dead and ascend back to heaven. And so they were not quite ready for this whole change to happen, but he wanted to take them to something that was even better. Now, I had no idea that I had a better relationship with God than the twelve had with him when they were with him during his three and a half years. Now, that was a glorious thing, but Jesus would never have ended it had it been the best. The only reason that he ended it is because there was something better that was to come. So let me tell you how great it was. Here we go, John 1, 14, And the Word became flesh, dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Somebody says, I wish I could see all that. Let me tell you something. You can see all that. When you go back and read the Gospels with the aid and help of the Holy Spirit, the imprint of that amazing ministry of Jesus is revealed to your spirit spirit, and it will impact your spirit as much as if you were there physically. Don't think that you were cheated because we were made to connect with God by spirit. This is what Jesus tried to tell the woman at the well. I don't know if she understood it or not. He said, God is a spirit, and they who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He said to the woman, you connect to God the Father with your spirit. Well, that is available to us now. These men, as wonderful as they were, had a flesh connection. They saw Jesus physically. 
but they didn't know him intimately, and it was certainly nothing like what would happen after the resurrection. Listen to John 21, 25. Jesus said, There are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. John's Gospel said that we only have a small record of all the things Jesus did. And it was amazingly glorious. But even then, we have a superior relationship. Now, the new relationship ahead is way better because God would never have introduced it had Jesus' ministry on the earth been the ultimate fulfillment. Now, they could not imagine the reality of this new way of knowing God and the intimacy because they did not have the indwelling spirit. The Holy Spirit was around them. His presence was near them, but his presence was not in them. Jesus said as much. He said he is with you, but he shall be in you. And they were totally unprepared for the change that was about to happen to make this come. It was the darkest hour of human history. In other words, Jesus had to suffer in order to pay for our sins and bring about this change. Isaiah 52 said it like this, verses 13 and 14, the Jerusalem Bible. See, my servant will prosper Boy, isn't that the truth? Jesus had the blessing of God on everything that he did. He shall be lifted up, and he was. They exalted him. He will rise to great heights. As the crowds were appalled on seeing him, so disfigured did he look that he seemed no longer human. So Jesus was worshipped on the one hand, but then in his suffering, He didn't even appear to be a human being. Listen to Lamentations chapter 1 and verse 12, New Living Translation. Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look around and see if there is any suffering like mine, which the Lord brought on me in the day of his fierce anger. In other words, this amazing ministry of Jesus on the earth with all of its glory It had to come to a close in order that our redemption could be purchased. The only way that we could be saved is for a pure and innocent human being to shed his blood to pay for our sins. That was what it took to release us from the bondage of Satan. And it was a dark and terrible hour when that happened. Humanity was at its worst when Jesus was doing his best. We see total injustice on everyone. We see cowardice in his own friends. We see hypocrisy in all the rulers. We see envy with the rulers. We see fear with his friends. And even the women, especially his mother, even when they saw him on the cross, they were filled with hopelessness. Hopelessness is not a good thing. So humanity was at its worst when Christ was at his best. And what I want you to see is he would never have gone to this length if it wasn't to do something better, to bring about something better. In other words, for Jesus to die like this only to get us back to where we were would be awful. I was talking to the Lord one time about the ascension and Jesus sitting at his right hand. And I was just saying to the Lord, okay, Father, I, I, I'll go ahead and tell you what I'm thinking since you know it anyway. The New Testament makes such a big deal about Christ being seated at your right hand. Over and again, it talks about that. The Apostle Paul talked about it a lot And so what's the big deal? Because Christ went back to your right hand, but wasn't he there before? In other words, he went through all of this and he just got right back to where he was before. And the Holy Spirit imprinted this on me and said, yes, 
but he was all God when he was there before. Now he is there as the God man. Don't ever forget this. There is a man, a high priest, tempted in every way like you and I are tempted, who sits at the right hand of God, and he makes intercession for you. And because he has bridged the gap between you and the Holy, Holy Father in heaven, there is no spiritual force on this planet, no demonic power, including the chief of them all, Satan. None of them can separate you from the grip that God the Father laid on you when he brought you into his family, when you believed on Christ. And so what I want you to see is that the relationship changed so that we could not only be saved, not only be forgiven of our sins, but actually come to a deeper knowledge of God than we could ever imagine. And that is why Christ died on the cross and rose again. That's all the time I have for this session, but we'll pick up here tomorrow. I hope you'll join me. I want to thank you for watching our podcast today. And if you really liked it, would you please give us a little thumbs up by clicking on that sign down below. And then I would encourage you to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our future podcasts because they're all going to be good. And if you would like to support us financially, either with a one-time gift or recurring gift, you can do that by clicking on the link below or going to myfaithroots.com. Thank you so much for watching this program.